Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending April 16th, 2023. Uh, we've got some weird anime news this week, actually. Um, remember Do It Yourself, the uh, anime series about high school girls making stuff? It's getting a live action series, uh, because why not? You know, that is certainly a thing sure. that seems like you could do in live action. It will be shot uh, on location. Um, oh, wow. There, I did not realize this actually at the time. It was made in, um, set in a particular um, uh, city. And I'm trying to uh, pull up the information here and it's not being helpful. But um, it will be, be shot in that city, like live on location. Um, nice. Presumably also in the near future. Who knows? So exciting. Um, yeah, very cool. Also moving on to just some regular anime news. Um, Suzume is now the number one anime film of all time <laughs> in China and South Korea. Not only that, um, let's see here. Um, this is in week three in China. It has sold 21.6 million tickets in mainland China, um, earning uh, over 720 million yuan. That's over 105 US dollars, million US dollars. Wow. Yeah, um, the highest-selling Japanese anime in the country of all time. Similarly, um, according to the official Twitter account for the film, it sold more tickets in South Korea than any other Japanese film. Damn, damn. Yep, uh, 4.4 million tickets in South Korea, uh, highest-earning film of 2023 so far, 35.7 million U.S. dollars in South Korea. So, nice. congratulations, yeah. Suzume. I hope and it's I will be this seeing it back. tomorrow. Yes, Yay! excellent. Um, we'll go back to Suzume in a little bit. Meanwhile, there's a company called Coop. Coop, Coop. I Coop. don't know where that's coming from, but whatever. It, it was listed um, in the credits of one of the animes we watched for this season. Ah, interesting. Because oh, yes. I was like, what is Coop? <laughs> so. so they're a post-production firm. Um, uh, they announced on April 3rd they're establishing a new anime editing studio called Suganami Studio Station Slide. Um, and they specifically said because there's so much demand for animation editing. Um, well, you know, the yeah. industry is just that big. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, this is actually um, a merging of a, a company called QTech and Pony Canyon Enterprises, which was a subsidiary of Pony Canyon. Pony Canyon yeah, folks yeah, yeah, yeah. editing and so forth. And they bought that out and pulled them into there. Oh, so cool. yeah, there's some cool. other yeah. things going on there. Um, but yes, good to see more stuff going on in the industry. Um, moving back to film, anime film news. Oh, whoops. Um, the Detective Conan film um, earned $6 million in its first day in Japanese theaters. Pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah. Um, no complaints there. And I mean, we keep hearing about this. The Detective Conan films do really, really well. Um, this is also, good because Toho says they aim for this film to be the first in their franchise to earn 10 billion yen. Okay. Well, damn. I hope. <laughs> All right. Good luck. Well, six I mean, million on day one. If they keep exactly, that kind yeah. of momentum, just, you know, run yeah. it for 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See what you get. Exactly. So yeah. it's a good little series. I always like yeah. it. Um, this film has earned 63% more on its first day than the previous film, The Bride of Halloween. Dun, dun, wow. Uh, this one's The Iron Submarine. So. I've never seen Detective Conan, so that's... Okay. We've got, we've got to fix that. Yeah, apparently. Um, <clears throat> anime film Blue Giant earned $7 million in Japanese theaters. Um, this is just so far, though. Um, um <clears throat> It's been out for a little bit. Um, and it is remarkable because this is about a, a basketball student who sees a live jazz performance and decides to take a, the saxophone despite having no lessons prior. <laughs> and kind of, you oh. know, how well will he do kind of just starting oh, on his own. Um, the original music is composed by Hiromi Uehara, who's a world-renowned pianist. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, definitely a you know impressive sort of staff there. I so, need to check this out. Absolutely. The manga is available from some of the so, Yeah. Good to see, like, you know, non Ghibli, non Hasoda, non, you know, right. names making a lot of money. Um, but, I mean, the big names still make a lot of money, too. The Doraemon film is still at number one. 
<laughs> yep. In its yes, sixth yes, weekend. Yes, do. <laughs> Um, 166,000 tickets, so it is kind of slowing down a little bit. Um, made $1.5 million this Friday for a total of $28 million since opening. Jeez. <laughs> Good job, Dorylon. Yeah, Dorylon's done the thing. Good job. Mm -hmm. um, not so much doing the thing, sadly, is uh, Susan May in U.S. theaters. Um, as of recording this, um, um, Susan May came out um, in previous screenings on the previous Thursday for us. Uh, 2,000 theaters, it made $680,000. It's not massive. Um, to give you an idea, in when Weathering With You came out in its first two fan preview screening days, it made $3 million. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I will be putting forth my effort again good. tomorrow yes. to Thank put you. in my, my money towards that goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, tomorrow, we'll... just buy five hundred thousand dollars worth. That, of yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> just kick it over credit. that million mark there. Yeah, mm -hmm. to take credit. <laughs> what's that alarm full of cash? Here you go. <laughs> what's that alarm mean? That means we shouldn't accept your credit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a slightly suspicious transaction. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, not the only Suzume news though. Makoto Shinkai is going to India yeah. for the premiere of Suzume over there. Um, a, a PVR Pictures announced on its Instagram account uh, that Makoto Shinkai will be attending um, the premiere of Suzume in India. Um, that'll be on April 21st, so pretty soon now. Wow, yeah, not that many days. Um, it'll open uh, with a Hindi dub and uh, Japanese and English subs. Um, early preview screenings were um, uh, were out there. It opened at number one, November 11th. Um, so 1.3 million tickets in its first three days. So, and that's Suzume in Japan, to be clear. Um, so interesting to, to wonder like what's gonna happen with India as a market moving forward. Yeah. Um, but that is a cool thing. Um, also, I just like mentioning um, anime films coming out that, that aren't from the big names. Uh, there's a film called The Lonely Castle in the Mirror that G-Kids has licensed. Uh, they'll be coming to US theaters sometime soon um there'll be japanese um with english subtitles and english dub this summer um open in japan december 23rd um also screened at the international film festival festival rotterdam so oh wow cool uh kichi hara is the director he directed miss hokusai and colorful yeah, miss hokusai. yeah so very cool um also the uh, script is written by the writer of miss hokusai as well um, the character designs are by the character designer for Blue Exorcist, Erased, and Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, always interested to see that kind of. Actually, do we have a. a there we go. There's only cats on the mirror. Um, so, hoping that that is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see here. Also, this week, things we want to just mention potentially in passing. Um, so, broccoli is getting taken over by happy net um long time fans may, may be familiar with broccoli as uh a long time anime company um broccoli was um uh they did digi carrot uh they sort of they had multiple media, media franchises digi carrot galaxy angel uh aquarian age yep um utano prince sama and Kamigami no Asobi, oh, yeah. um, all of which had anime adaptations. They were also involved in uh, Peter Ten, H2O, and Such a Princess, among others. Uh, they owned the Gamers. They what? I said, interesting. Yeah. Sister Princess? Yeah. Yeah, Sister Princess. Yeah. Um, okay. huh. uh, they used to own the Gamers retail chain, and there was a big Digi Carrot uh, uh, poster up on that for a long time. One of the kind of Classic things in Akihabara for years, uh, but they sold, sold the anime in 2011. So they could kind of been around for a long time. Founded in, you know, I mean, around since 1994. So right. one, one of the big ones. Um, but the like Broccoli's board of directors announced the takeover bid and they recommended shareholders take it. Like it's very much kind of that the uh, they've been working together for a long time, apparently. So yeah. it sounds like it just, it just made sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, just kind of interesting, um, Retro Crush is getting. Not even the secret of blue water. Nice. 
which is cool. Uh, they generally don't have a massively, um, they have a, a large selection, but not necessarily like the really, really huge names. So right. um, fingers crossed. That's a, a good thing for them. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to mention um, Yasumichi Kushida, voice actor, passed away this week at age 46. Um, perhaps best known in Japan for voicing the Incredible Hulk. Oh, um, wow. oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was his sort of his main role. Um, fellow voice actor said he sh probably shouted Hulk smash the most times ever in Japan. <laughs> um, he was also in Planetarian, Demon Prince Emma, Akutop on White Sam, Sand, excuse me, oh. uh, Space Battleship Yamato 2199, Banana Fish, Bleach, Kintama, and Naruto. So, oh, uh, damn. Wow, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, rest in peace. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. Um, so those were the <clears throat> headlines. Let's go ahead and move into the breakdown. Talk about some of these news in a bit more detail. Yeah, break it all down. Shake down, break down. <laughs> and let's start with do it yourself getting a live action TV series. That's an interesting one. I mean, when you said that, it's just like, yeah. I mean. Why wouldn't it you? would be difficult to adapt to try and get all of the mecha and stuff if you did Witch for Mercury? Be like mm. that'd be a lot to work with. Right. But do it yourself if you have competent, like high school age actors that can do the just hammer a nail. That's the <laughs> whole show. <laughs> like, yeah. You got, I mean, you got the drones. You've got the all the <laughs> other stuff going on. Like it's to me, it's just it, it's a combination of, of two things that make it interesting. One is that you've got just enough sci-fi that you've got to do just all that extra work for just like yeah. these extra like shots here and there that don't really matter, but they kind of matter for the show. But then also like, you know, this is, this is not a big franchise. Like this came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, I believe do it yourself was an original anime. If I recall correctly. Yeah. yeah. There's no, there's no manga or light novel series. Like it just kind of came out of nowhere and, and, and be, uh, was popular. So well, it's just say, how popular cool. are we talking? I mean, I enjoyed yeah. the show. I thought it was great, yeah. but that, I'm not a Japanese audience. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? If it was some kind of, it had to obviously been wildfire going with this mm -hmm. show for them to be like, yeah, let's take a shot for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, there are a ton of drones and stuff, but, you know, the some of the, like, uh, pop-up screens for her friend who goes to the nicer mm -hmm. high school mm -hmm. and does, she's doing, like, a lot of computer work. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, some of that, I don't know how much you could like dumb it down a shade to have her working on a monitor with a physical keyboard versus yeah. like the sort of virtual monitors and virtual keyboards and stuff. But it's like, I, I could just see, I, I could see adapting this to a live action in a way that I would still find it interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm wait, I, I look forward to the musical. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, it's going to be part of the pachinko parlor. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also curious, I guess, as an original anime, kind of is, is this like Girls in Ponzer? Like, we're going to adapt this everywhere we can. That's a because we have the rights. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe part of a media mix strategy. Um, Sanjo City in Niigata Prefecture, Prefecture, by the way, that yep. is where it's, it's set. Um, so, Which yeah, if there's... We, if we know from the anime that that was actually set in that city, we know mm -hmm. somebody had a little bit of sponsorship. Mm, yeah. And that for this, if it was like, hey, guys, you you loved the anime, how would you mm -hmm. like to sponsor or in, or <laughs> permit us the uh, the licenses to do this live filming in your city? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I got gotcha. you. Yep, exactly. Do it I wonder... yourself, the game. <laughs> Make a birdhouse, level yeah. one. <laughs> I'd play that game. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, I wonder how heavy you go on the future element of the show. Um, you could dial that back, mm. you know, and it's entirely possible that you can rig it so that you don't need it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the vast majority of the show, you the other than the things flying around and then seeing mm -hmm. the sort of juxtaposition of the schools, we don't spend a lot of time. In the high tech school, <clears throat> like they're right. not yeah, in yeah. like the True. high tech, right. like mm -hmm. prototyping lab. It's like you see the elements of the high tech kind of stuff, but it really a vast majority of it takes place in their like little rinky dink clubhouse. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like so, yeah. I mean, use some money to make some of the the high tech shot 
to get the, the touch screens and stuff like that. And then just all focus exactly what's happening, building a tree house. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, they got all into doing it in the actual show. And it's like, it's all about collecting materials and the yeah. know, connection between the girls. And it's like, it doesn't, it wasn't very high tech. I mean, you could even just make it modern. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you know. can do that too. Mm -hmm. Just cut and that say, out. You know, and, and I mean, you, you could still have it be about, you know, the, the approaching trends of 3D printing and right. manufacturing and all that stuff. But yeah, who knows? Um, I mean, if nothing else is the fact that you can just say, yeah, we'll do a live action series of that. Sure. That can happen. Pretty cool. Um, let's talk Susan May. Yeah. Is Susan May earning 680K in its preview screenings a problem? So my worry is, is that I'm going to show up for the 115 show tomorrow and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, we decided to take it off, off, uh, <laughs> off the thing. Don't laugh because that happened to I, me with Cowboy Be Bebop the mm, movie. Yeah. What? The actual same theater that I'm going to. Mm. So I actually showed up to the theater to, to watch the movie. And they're just like, yeah, we just wanted to put it in a theater that was going to buy that was going to sell 20 more tickets. So we just pulled it. Mm. And, you know, so that's oh. that's kind of my fear tomorrow. So I'll go there. And I'll be like, uh -uh. Mm. And um, you know, I have to find out another way to see it. Um, <clears throat> but I, th I think I don't know that it's a problem. I feel like it's a blip. I feel okay. like, I, yeah. I, I feel like that maybe it's just just the bad luck of maybe some type of timing or because you know we have Americans have an audience now. Mm -hmm. You know, for for anime, and you know, you're seeing a lot more theaters putting anime in there, and sure. at least here in Maryland, you see a lot of art art houses like mm -hmm. having people going, "Oh yeah, here here's our anime Sunday, or here's our one mm -hmm. anime a month that we're going to do a special thing around." Cool, uh, you know, which uh, you know the theaters around here around me do, and um, so I'm thinking that it's probably just a blip because. Mm -hmm. He's made so much of these other things that mm -hmm. you would think that the people are just like, oh, Shinkai. Okay. Yeah. Or at least the people who, like us would be yeah. like, oh, Shinkai. And yeah. you should you would see more than three people inside of the theater. Yeah. Right? So I don't know. I, I, I just think it's yeah. it's an outlier. It's also possible that the that those who are aware of it aren't as interested in going to a preview screening. Right. Yes. You know, right. it, it you know. Your name and whether with you him, him being a, a hot new thing and everyone's leaping towards it and now folks like okay I know that film but I'll go on the weekend like I right I, yeah. right yeah well where are we in in spring break schedule wise we're past it we're yeah past well it. for for mm -hmm. for us yeah. I was gonna say because I could see where if you had dropped <coughs> this at a time where you have a younger audience who cannot physically get just get to it mm -hmm. to do the preview thing. Yeah, where it's like you know, if you put it in a in a place where they're not in school, which would mm -hmm. previews in the middle of the week, if it's mm -hmm. a school time, then you're not going to have as many younger attendees right. because they're at mm -hmm. school. You're going to have to wait for those weekend mm -hmm. opportunities for them to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I hope it's going to have. And I didn't check when I when I mm -hmm. saw it uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. I didn't check to see what was the run. Is it a two week run at that theater? How much run ah. do we have mm -hmm. so that, you know, what you didn't see in the sort of the early phase, you might get a stretch on this that'll hit mm -hmm. some, hit the targets mm -hmm. that they're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Um, I can say right now, my local theater, um, they have it through at least the 26th. Okay, so, so the 10 days. Have, yeah. Um, again, perhaps more than that, but that's all I'm seeing on... Uh, on Fandango. Yeah, and I certainly think that, you know, it's being that, you know, a lot of folks in the anime uh, community like to also sound off one another that at mm -hmm. you, now that it's out in the theaters and generally you get to it in the in a time yeah. frame that's good for you, mm -hmm. that will generate a little bit more of what's going on. Like, you should see right. this. Definitely yeah. go see this. And it's certainly getting a lot of press. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of headlines, you know, you see... I just saw a headline, um, the best animated film of the year so far does not have Mario in it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 That's like, that's good. That'll generate people's attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or generate buzz that will get people's attention, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's, it is, I agree. This feels like a blip. It feels like just something like an oddity, um, but we'll see. Yeah. I think in the long run, given what it's done for, you know, mm. profitability in China and South Korea. Yeah. And hopefully India. Uh, yeah. I think they'll, I think they will definitely make budget. And I, and it's, mm. I think, yeah, I think yeah. we we're well aware that given how they anticipate return mm -hmm. that if the U S returns slightly lower, it doesn't mean the next Shinkai film will not get released in the U S right. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're not going to be like, well, it did better in India. So we'll just release it there in China mm -hmm. and South Korea. We'll just cut America out. Like, no, it's still going to get, you know, released here, whatever the next film is, mm -hmm. as long as, you know, globally it hits its yeah. budget right. and then the yeah. projected return. So yeah. he will do fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, a weird blip, but I don't think it's indicative of cutting off North America for, for any access yeah. to anime films yeah. ever again. Um, according to Wikipedia, it is projected to grow three to seven million dollars in its opening weekend. So this weekend. Okay. Which is not bad. Yeah. That, that's that's a put that together with the global cash train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That should be fine. Yeah. Um, see here um well let's talk about uh china and south korea um because yeah. that's worth mentioning as well so i'm actually looking at the wikipedia data 82 million dollars in the first 10 days in china surpassing your name to be the highest grossing japanese film ever released in the country um as of april 9th grossed 102 million dollars mm. i think partly in fairness because very little anime has been officially available in china Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I think folks are hungry. Um which is I mean I would I know given the the global tensions in the in the region mm. that it's it's never um it's never the greatest friendliest environment all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You know mem memories mm -hmm. tend to be long. Mm -hmm. But I would hope that this kind of South Korea and China being yeah. like, you know, hey, this is a great film. Mhm. Mm doesn't you know the origin of the film is not as important mm. as like yeah. the subject matter of the film mm -hmm. and the individual who put this thing yeah. to celluloid mm -hmm. you know i would love to live in a time where that becomes the concern because yeah. you know there's so much other acrimonious behavior in that region right now i was actually <laughs> reading a really good study that showed that there's a pretty clear divide in eastern uh uh, uh, Far Eastern nations, if you will, um, between, you know, do I like anime and what do I think of Japan as a country? Yeah. Yeah. You as know, that they, should they, be. Yeah. There's just kind of right. like, you know, yeah. <laughs> the, the modern anime industry doesn't have a lot of connections to, you know, World War II era Japan. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, or I remember when Toei <laughs> sponsored the war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All those cartoon characters went to war. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, which, you know, at that point, so Shinkai is going to India. Um, do we think, I mean, what kind of market is India for anime? It's an interesting question. Um, on <clears throat> So on my channel, on my YouTube channel, um, it is in the top five countries that watch Interesting. my 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 channel mm -hmm. which i also because i just took a look at it for the first time in years the yeah other day. and um the, the the demographics and i was just like seriously really mm -hmm. and the spike for that has come in the past 12 months mm. so it's not something that's always oh been yeah there right so it's it's something recent mm -hmm. so i think that it's just mm -hmm. that maybe with things improving in a certain way for India's uh, infrastructure, for one of the mm -hmm. term, I think that now that people are not, not everyone is living in a day-to-day -day squalid existence, um, just only half of them now, mm -hmm. um, you know, there, you have a, you have an, you have a huge population of people are just going, oh, this thing. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I kind of like this. This mm -hmm. is kind of fun. And it's, different than what i'm getting from america and britain and mm -hmm. europe and this is more 
friendly to us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and keep in mind that, you know, like Tezuka, you know, when he made his manga and stuff, that's, you know, he, you know, the Buddha was in India. You yeah, know, true. Yeah, you know, the mm-hmm. kind of thing. So there, I think there yeah. has always been a desire probably in India to get sure. more in mm-hmm. there. And yeah. now that I think that people are just uh, technologically speaking and, and wealth yeah. speaking are able to tap into that. Well, I'm also, interestingly, I'm looking up, uh, so ANN has been uh, reporting more and more stuff about India over the past couple months. Um, and for an example, um, Sunday, April 16th, Disney Channel showed three Doraemon movies in India. Right. Wow. Okay. Um, and uh, the TV channel Super Hungama showed one of the Pokemon movies. Um a couple of weeks ago, um, Shinchan, a couple of Shinchan movies, Pokemon. So a lot of stuff is available over there. Um, uh, also interesting, and again, this is just kind of random data. Uh, just this past week, Crunchyroll added 44 new anime titles uh, into the Indian market on Crunchyroll. Damn. So they're pouring stuff into that market. Yeah. Now. Well, I know one of the uh, the sites that I I found anime on used to have a counter that would show mm. like what countries were ah, in their yeah, uh, population, right. and India always featured within at least the top fifteen. Mm. So it's like mm-hmm. there were people consuming content from that region, and I know mm-hmm. years ago I used to uh, play an MMO, and there was a guy who was in India that played with frequently and mm. he said his biggest problem was they had brownouts uh, right mm-hmm. so it's like you know he he could play the game for a period of time and then it's like he had to stop because that would be like the daily brownout and it's like they had not as good reliable access to infrastructure elements to be able to stream and to do like online yeah. gaming right so Sense. that was Gosh, that has to have been a good 10 years ago now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that you figure in the last 10 years, yeah, I mean, a lot more has come online. A lot more connectivity has occurred in lo- obviously larger urban sectors. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you keep adding connectivity, you're going to keep seeing that consumption rate rise. And yeah. with near on to a billion people, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, you've lot. got China locked in. You know, and and I have a having the Indian it, market <clears throat> another good bunch of people to have. Absolutely. Well, well, I was going to say the Indian market is also going to be not near, not as restrictive. Yeah. As, mm-hmm. the, yeah. as the Chinese market, so there there might be some things that will. There'll probably be a lot of things that they'll just be like, yeah, okay, it's fine. I so I just pulled up on. a, uh, I just pulled up a blog <clears throat> article from 2020 where they use Google Trends to mm-hmm. see what were the 20 most popular anime in india now to be clear again this is what people are talking about people are googling not right. necessarily what's available number one is doraemon um shinchan one piece dragon ball fairy tale naruto pokemon code geass mm. uh bleach one punch man my hero academia gintama boruto demon slayer uh, Seven Deadly Sins, Detective Conan, Death Note, Berserk. If Berserk is something yeah. that folks in India are watching, um, Assassination Classroom, and of all things, Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, really? Yeah. It sounds like they're getting the old Adult Swim story. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. Well, actually, Yu Yu actually, Yu actually, 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 yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho does, makes a little bit of sense for, for Hindi. Mm. Or for for Hindu for Hinduism. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. b- because of of the way that that show is created with, um, you know, people going to heaven, and hell, and that's and, true. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that all that kind of stuff. Spirit so. guns, all that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, and, and and it could be that you know, <clears throat> happens to right. be you know licensed and airing on some channel every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I agree that kind of, that 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 does trend. Um. But the thing too is, you know, that's <laughs> One Piece, Fairy Tale, Dragon Ball, Naruto, yeah. Yeah, Bleach, very <clears throat> so, yeah. FHA, yeah, totally. Those are those are what folks are talking about over here, pretty much. Yep. Um. So yeah, I can I can totally see that being a um a big market. 
global interne- interconnectivity is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be fascinated to see the breakdown of like legitimate versus pirate consumption. That might not be enough <laughs> numbers you want to look at, Brad. <laughs> um, right. Because it's, it's the, the classic question. And, and in fairness, it's one of those things, you know, like in a lot of countries, like there's, you know, licensing isn't always easy and quick right yeah so there may be a lot of stuff that just hasn't gotten licensed yet and they're they're just they're grabbing it wherever they can which will be very i mean because of the high uh proportion of english speakers in india i think that would that would you might not even have piracy piracy Mm. as much as you have uh, and you know more about this stuff both of you Mm. guys about setting up so it looks like you are originating from a different country Oh, so that yeah, you yeah. can access yeah. network mm-hmm. elements that mm-hmm. are not available in your yeah, home country. That's true. Yeah. So you, it would. I don't know whether you classify that as piracy, but if you were mm-hmm. to, it's not. It's you not. Know, it's, if you it's were not to classify spoof, as per, per, well, if you were to spoof your VPNs. location and yeah. said that you were in Toronto, mm-hmm. so now yeah. you have access to the North American streaming mm-hmm. feeds, and now you're watching Crunchyroll, which you paid for, but mm-hmm. it thinks you're in Toronto. Yes. And you're not allowed so, to get whatever the crunchy feed is in Mumbai. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? so it's like the, so mm. Yeah, so the selling point of VPNs is actually that. Whereas they're just like by virtue yeah. of the fact that you're legally doesn't uh, you know hiding yourself in a different place, so to speak, mm-hmm. you should be able to access those things because that's where the people the people are trying to hack you think you're from. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, I, I don't think there's anything illegal about that just yet, but I'm sure that there are governments out there that are just like going, what can we do about this? <laughs> yeah, we need to tighten I mean, this up a little bit. Yeah, it, it's the classic sort of legal gray area where, yeah. you know, it's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like here in the United States where it, where we have laws. Mm-hmm. And we kind of go look at the law and we go, is that really a good law? Well, we're, we're not going to be able to really do anything until the Supreme Court kind of go until it goes through Ways the process. In. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it goes, it goes through the process, the legal process. Yeah. It's not unlike sharing Netflix accounts mm-hmm. where it's like, right. if you're doing it, you know, everyone will occasionally, you know, let a friend, you know, right. see something, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, allow somebody else into their living room to watch the thing even right. though technically you know it's only for you right um but then it turns into you know me and my 100 closest friends all have my netflix password it's right like, yeah. mm. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it's that that kind of thing where it's like okay i can yeah. see you know yep. where the growth Definitely. you've you you can get access through means mm-hmm. to legal content yep and given the, the high proportion of English speaking, you can understand that content without having to go yeah, through true. hoops to get yeah. it converted into Hindi or Urdu point. or anything else. Right. Yeah. That's so it's like, point. yeah, the, again, the global connectivity. It's like, that's mm-hmm. really, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. What a golden time for anime. Yeah. And, and that's a great point because there is just so much available legally that mm-hmm. you don't have to. You, know, you don't have to download fan subs or do any of that kind of yep. stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You can just you just have to get out over. from under your yeah out mm-hmm. from your region lock. Yeah, you have to get mm-hmm. beyond that, and then True. you've got total legal access to it. Mm-hmm. It's like, and you've got a a very technologically literate, you know, a, a large percentage of technologically literate you know population yep. that would definitely know how to use a VPN. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Interesting. So I wonder where is Shinkai going to go next. Mm. You know, so you visited India. Yeah. Where would be the next biggest emerging market for Shinkai to go drop in for the yeah. Suzume premiere? I mean, he, he doesn't need to go to China or South Korea. <laughs> no, they already got that one locked down. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know either. Brazil. Yeah, South America. Great that call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only reason why is population majority in south america say again well, say, they're, given... they're the largest population yeah in south i was gonna say because the reason why i say that is because there's so much anime in portuguese right now that are fans yes. subbed into portuguese mm-hmm. exactly yep um and i know brazil is featured quite quite 
astoundingly and and broadly yeah. as the as the decade has moved on where it's like okay you don't hear nearly as much about any you know chile or argentina yeah. or, or ecuador right. you know much more about brazil mm-hmm. so i could i could see that being like okay you know brazil is kind of leading the way if you're going to have a south yeah. america mm-hmm. event lead the way with brazil and then that you know the others will follow yeah <laughs> yes. exactly um yeah, you can always I go to Medellin and go, where? Bo- <laughs> yes, cocaine is actually cheaper than this, but here. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a great point. I think South America probably is the, the next frontier. Um, it's a there that is a market primed for anime. Yeah. Um, yeah. To go well, to go big. C- Central, South. You only have two languages you got to translate into. Mm-hmm, Portuguese right. and Spanish. That's it. Then you cover yeah. like the vast majority of that region. Mm-hmm. So. Um, just a little hard to get to from Japan. It's just a long boat ride. It's <laughs> a hop, skip, and a jump. It's a hop, skip, and a jump. Come on. <laughs> they had a Concorde. It would be only a matter of hours. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts on that? Um, I mean, John and I have already seen Susan May, and we're definitely thumb, two thumbs up. Yeah. I'll let you guys know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I meant to look at the soundtrack, too. I'll have mm, to do that. Yeah. It's quite the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, we, we live in a great time that all of this anime is available to us. And, and you know, if I could jump back 20 years and tell myself that all this would be available, I'd, you know, blow my mind. Yeah, if I could tell myself 20 years ago, going... Yeah, you don't have to buy in twenty years. You won't have to buy just the volume three and four, and hope to God that you'll ever find one again. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. And I have to hunt for those volumes. Sure. I would take a hundred bucks and go and find the guys who who <clears throat> pirate founded Crunchyroll. Be like, shut up! I'm joining in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am now a full on invested person. Now give me some shares. I want to see how this happens. Why are you so desperate? Just trust me. Do you have a Sony TV? That's the only thing I'm going to tell you. Yeah, just saying. Um, just wait until this little thing called Demon Slayer comes along. You'll be fine. Gosh. And don't make Tower of God. No. <laughs> <laughs> they made worse. Um, all right. That'll do it for this week. Thank you all for watching. See you all next week. Johnny. Bye.